Hi there, my name is Eli, and welcome back to my channel, Draculija. And in today's video, I have the brand new Monster High Monster Fest Laguna Blue doll. I am so excited that I was able to find her. She is the last one that I needed from the Monster Fest lineup. As you can see, I've already found Cleo, Frankie, and Claudine. They're readily available at Walmart stores, I think in person and online. But for whatever reason, Laguna has been kind of elusive and difficult to find. I think people, uh, people, you know, like collectors in Australia were able to find her. But as far as the United States goes, we've been, you know, lagging with this gorgeous school. But on Saturday, I found her on Walmart's website in stock. So I purchased her in a heartbeat and she came in. It is now Monday. So she came in within like two days. And since then, like since I've bought her on Saturday, I have not seen her go back in stock nor have I really seen any reports of people finding her in person either. So I don't know what's going on with her distribution. Um, she's just quite the slippery little fish and that's okay. But I'm excited that I have her now and she is our first side glance Laguna in G3, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, her, her face is a little off to me. Like, I don't think it's because I have a bad screening or anything. I just think the side glance I'm not used to for Laguna. So I can't wait to unbox her and take a closer look. But you know, all things considered, getting her online and not being able to pick out her makeup, I still think her face looks pretty good. Sometimes I do get scared when I do online orders because it's just the luck of the draw. And there she is in box. We have the Monster Fest logo. Her little poster is Caddy Noir, who I think, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I feel like a lot of us are so hyped for Caddy Noir's release. I can't wait to get her and find her. And then we have some accessories in the box. And then the box is made to look like a concert stage since it is Monster Fest. And then the back of the box has this little artwork shot. Not my favorite, as I've said it before in the previous videos, but you know, it's fine. And then there's a little write up as well as a scenery of Monster Fest. Okay. Now I'm going to unbox this gorgeous Laguna doll so we can take a closer look at all of her details. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and I have unboxed Laguna. These dolls are really, really easy to unbox. I feel like it's a pretty smooth, pretty quick process. And before we get into the doll, I'm going to go over all of her accessories. So here is the first accessory pack. She has her little Polaroid camera. This one is pink in like a clamshell design. I like the eyeball shape as well. And the little handle looks like an octopus tentacle. And then there is the back of it. You can see there's like a little battery or film compartment. They're really, really cool. I really like these accessories. And then the Monster Fest ticket. Hers is in like a teal blue color. Pretty simple. And then her glasses. Mine look a little bent in this plastic, so I feel like I, yeah, look at that. That is not right. We definitely need to reshape these a little bit. Um, maybe I will heat them up because they're not, I don't want to snap the plastic, but I just, I have a feeling that's not how they're meant to be. So I might take like a blow dryer to them and then try to bend them back in shape because I don't want to snap this plastic. Yeah, I'm trying to do it with my hands, but it's a little fragile. Or maybe that's just what it's supposed to look like. No, I doubt it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it with my hands, y'all. Who am I kidding? Just very carefully bending it back into shape. Mm, let's see. Yeah, okay, they look a little bit better. That's probably how they're supposed to come. They just got misshapen in transit, which is unfortunate, but I do think they look really cool. Kind of a translucent purple clamshell design. They remind me of um, Ariel from The Little Mermaid, like her clamshell bralette, so pretty cute. And then the next one is some food accessories. Her little beverage is really cute. I see some ice cubes floating around with some kelp. There's like a little, <laughs> what is that creature? Is that like a shark or something? Very cute. And then it comes off. There's a little straw detail. I like her cup. And the sticker is placed well, unlike my Claudine whose sticker was all messed up. So that's, that's nice. And then I love this burger. It's black like Frankie's hot dog was. So I am assuming it is made with like squid ink or something. It just reminds me of SpongeBob, like the sesame seeds are a nice touch and I'm trying to see if it comes apart. I don't think it does. So it's pretty stuck in there, but there's a layer of lettuce and then you can see a little octopus tentacle coming out and she can hold this accessory. Yeah, I really like that one. 
And then her two little bracelets, let's see. One is like the admit one ticket for Monster Fest. And then the other one is like a friendship bracelet. Well, I don't really know what to call these. This one's kind of stuck in there, one sec. Okay, here it is. It is like an octopus tentacle. And then there's an anchor charm. Okay, so Cleo and Frankie had charms that were like representing one another. Like Cleo's charm was a lightning bolt for Frankie and then Frankie's charm was a scarab for Cleo. And then Laguna's charm is just like an anchor for herself. And then Claudine didn't get a charm. So a little inconsistent on these bracelets. Um, that's okay. I ship personally. Personally, I ship Laguna with Draculaura, but I don't know. I think the show or like the team probably ships her with Gil. I think that's, is that not what's happening in G3? Am I off base here? I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments down below if I'm off base. I don't know. Okay, and then my favorite accessory so far is Laguna's purse, her little handbag. Look at that, did you see that? It's like a dome for Neptuna and they really stylized Neptuna to be like similar in shape to her G1 counterpart because this is very much an homage and a throwback to Laguna's original purse from G1. It's not as um, cool, you know, it's not an actual clear dome with like a little pet inside, but I still think it's really cool like and if you look inside the bag I was looking at it it is just hollow inside there like that dome section is just hollowed out and the printing technique on this piece is so so cool I love it and then there's a little jellyfish right there some octopus tentacles some beads and then what are the handles made out of just some like scaly material with some more octopus tentacles and then the back has a little zipper compartment with a starfish and is in the shape of a clamshell, and I love this piece. Okay, we'll just like throw it on here, let's see. Yeah, very, very cool, I really like that. And then her poster she comes with is of Caddy Noir, like I mentioned. She's excited to see Caddy, and we're all excited to see Caddy as well. Come on, Caddy, where are you? We're looking for you. Okay, and now let's take a closer look at Laguna's fashions. Okay, so one thing to note is she does come with her like belt uh, elastic to her hand to hold this pose in packaging. You can cut off the elastic. I like to preserve them if I can. So I'm gonna just take this off real quick, but I wanted to show that since that's how she came packaged and it's interesting. Sometimes they do things like this, not all the time, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Okay, so I cut off the elastic now. Her arm is free. And then we'll take a closer look at her makeup and her hair. So here is Laguna up close. This face is very, very unique. It is our first side glance Laguna. I love her big brown eyes and a little bit of green. So they're kind of like a hazel shade. And then her makeup is three shades. We have this pinky coral color that is like the inner corner. And I love the uh, like thin bottom lash detail right there. And then it smokes out into this kind of like teal blue that matches her eyebrow color, to be honest. And then the inner corner makeup is uh, almost like a periwinkle blue. Yeah, I like her makeup. And then there's some freckles there and then little pearl, like iridescent white pearl details on her eyebrows and her um, makeup as well. I feel like they all kind of had cool makeup for this line since it was supposed to be like festival makeup. I wish Laguna's was something a little bit more exciting. Like Claudine got galaxy freckles and Clue had little like uh, diamond shapes on her face and Frankie always has really cool makeup like lightning bolts and stuff But Laguna's is a little bit understated. I think I wish I got something a little bit more for monster fest But it's fine and she does have her same forehead scales As you can see and then her lip color is super unique I don't feel like we've gotten anything like this in G3 before it kind of reminds me of like a like an oil spill It's this really kind of dark moody teal color and it does have a really nice shimmer to it and they're very very full lips i love them and then her hair is beautiful it's curly saran and it is this purple blue and platinum blonde i know a lot of people have been asking for this color back in laguna i don't mind the yellowy blonde but i do prefer this but when they give us the more yellow one i really don't care but yeah this is really really nice and then you can see the purple and blue kind of goes all the way around the nape of her neck right there. 
beautiful. And it's pretty nice for, for box hair. Like I'm trying to fluff it out. It's pretty nice. There's no product in it. And she does have a middle part. And look at that. Look at that bald spot behind the crown. I definitely need to fix this doll. Look at that. Yeah, I'm hoping I can fix that because that looks rough. And moving on to her crown, it is elastic and held in with some plastic tea ties right there. I like to take it off so I can wash the hair, but you know, it makes sure that it's sturdy in transit. So I'm gonna cut those off, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like beforehand on the doll. And now I will cut those off and be right back. Okay, here is the headpiece removed. It's pretty cool. It is like a headband and then like a crown piece that goes over the forehead and her crown headband is all this blue plastic. It's unpainted on the back. And then the printing details gave it this nice purple pink ombre. I like the depth they captured by giving that dark purple right there. It's really nice. I like her crown a lot. And then this section I'm like less fond of. I wish it was a different color, maybe like a, a pearlescent color rather than just the same kind of blue, but it's fine. I might paint it later. And then they do go back on super easy. So there's the doll. You can kind of just glide it over and there you go. Voila, plop it right back on. They're pretty sturdy, you know, you can shake it around. It's not going anywhere. So do not fret. These are easy to take off and reattach. And then I kind of want to mention this because I think it's a good tip. When you cut off the little ties on the head, I like to push the ties like back into the doll. That way those little bits of plastic aren't getting caught in the hair, especially if you're gonna wash the hair or restyle it or do something with it, they can kind of get caught in the hair right there. So I had three on the back of the head plus two on the side and I pushed them all into the doll's head. So they kind of just like fall in there. So that's a little tip that I wanna give cause I find it kind of helpful, you know? Okay, and then these are her earrings. They are the only silver <laughs> plastic accessory that we're getting on this doll so it kind of comes out of nowhere but i don't mind it they're sort of fishing hooks with some like bait and tackle on them you can see there's a little feather they're fine i'm not like obsessed with them but they get the job done and they're a unique mold so that's a plus and then her necklace piece is so cool it is elastic to her so yeah i might remove that so i can take the piece off and show you yeah, and then it wraps around the, her back. A lot of their necklaces do that as well, except Laguna's seems like the most limiting because it only it not only wraps around her back, but it also sort of wraps around her shoulders. So I feel like, look at that, already just moving her arm, the necklace moves with it. So it kind of limits your posability a little bit, but it's, it's a cool piece still, just a little bit restrictive. And then I'm gonna remove the elastic so we can take it off and see it a little closer. Okay, so I took the elastic off. I did keep it and preserve it. So like I took it off her whole body. It's a whole, it's a whole thing, but I wanna put it back on later. And there we can just easily yank it off her body. Oops, okay, there it is. And there is some printed detail on it as well. It looks like a jellyfish maybe, yeah. With some like beads and pearls. I really like this piece. I think in its, um the like original stock photos we had, it was a solid like um, white piece of plastic, but this is translucent and then it has this really nice like pink shimmer to it. So I'm quite quite a fan of this, this piece. And it does match her like leg cuffs, which we'll get to. And then I will keep this off for now so we can see more of Laguna's uh, outfit. Then we have this belt, which we'll go through next and there's no paint detail on it. It's all just this like really hot pink color, but it's really nice. I really like the rope detail on the back. It kind of mimics like fish scales. And then on the right section, you can see there's some flowers, more rope detailing. I like it. It's a lot nicer than the one we got for her um, Scared Ice Island playset. It's very similar, but a little bit more detailed. And then it just snaps off. And then we'll keep see what else she has. Okay, her next really cool piece is this kind of overskirt that has a, iridescent fabric. It's kind of meant to look like a jellyfish. There's two layers. So there's this more iridescent fabric and then this more kind of like tool fabric. Okay, and then there you can see, we can unvelcro it. This reminds me of um, Hot Couture Laguna. Oh, it's snagging some fabric. Okay, the whole thing just comes off like that. Let me set Laguna down. 
this is a mess. There's so many things everywhere. Okay, here is this like overskirt portion. Look at that. That is such a tiny little <laughs> seam right there. Be careful that you don't just like snap that in half or rip it. This fabric feels kind of like the fabric they used recently on the Refresh Clio for her sort of like uh, top piece. I like it. It's nice. It definitely needed some layering. Like if it was just this, I don't think it would be as effective. But you can even see here, they even try to layer these two pieces. So there's some dimension right there. And then same thing on this half as well. Yeah. It's really effective at kind of giving that feel of like a fluttering jellyfish. I like it a lot. I thought I wasn't going to like this piece, to be honest. Like when I saw stock photos and I was kind of just looking at this doll, I wasn't a big fan, but I do like it. It's effective. It's really nice to take off and style and you can probably do a lot of fun things with it for other Laguna dolls. And yeah, I think that is a pretty cool piece. And then her dress is pretty simple underneath, like a little slip dress with some, like a coral reef pattern. There's some coral, some like little bony fish swimming by. So like a lot of the other dolls in Monster Fest, this is probably going to be a unique kind of dress for everyone. This is what my cut of fabric looks like for my Laguna doll, but yours might look differently. And then there is the back. There's a Velcro closure as well as a little ribbon. I know not a lot of people like the ribbon. It is a little tough. Mine's already coming undone, but I do like it. I think it's kind of elegant and it's a nice closure. So I'm not, I'm not mad at it. And then, yeah, it's nice. It's really form fitted. You don't really see it with like everything going on. Like you have the jellyfish overskirt and then like the necklace and like this kind of gets lost a little bit, but I could see fun restyles with this. Okay, moving along to the rest of her fashions. Also, I really love this front seam right here that kind of like bunches up the fabric. It really helps with that jellyfish effect. And then here are her legs slash shoe situation. I don't have any leg chips, which is nice. So yeah, um, a little bit of scraping right there, but that's because of this like little leg piece. So yeah, it's bound to happen. And I love the shoe situation. What's going on here? These shoes, I feel like they're a little bit of a different color. I feel like they were advertised as more black and these have like the little bit of like a blue green tinge to them. Almost like they kind of match her lip color, to be honest, but I don't mind them. Look at that. There's like a dome on them. And then you can see like a dead little fish bone inside. Do you see that? The dome's only on the outer part of the shoe. The inner portion does not have the dome as you can see. And they did come with some like elastic over them. I'm gonna take it off on one shoe just to see if they fit fine. Like do they need the elastic or are they just being extra careful? Okay. Yeah, the tentacle is a little loose. They're really cool. I really, really like them. And then she has these hot pink mesh socks. They can, I'm gonna take this piece off real quick. Okay. Then you can stretch them up like that. And then I think this is actually supposed to go over the sock. They just snap on Laguna's legs like so. And they sit right above her fin. I love this, I love it so much. I feel like they're doing fun things with shoes in this uh, series and this looks really, really cool. Like, look at that, look at that. I like it. And I can definitely see all three of these being great for restyles, like the little cuffs, the socks, and the shoes are all 10 out of 10 for me. Like, they're all so freaking cool. Look at that little dome. Look at that. I see you, Monster High. Okay, y'all are killing the shoe game. I love it. Okay, I have zhushed up Laguna. I added her bag, her camera, her little drink, as well as her glasses. And let me show you the glasses a little bit closer. I really like them. Hers are really good. They're in the same league for me as Cleo and Frankie's were. I would definitely say Claudine's rank at the bottom for me, but these are really cool. Yeah, she looks good with everything put together. Like she already fits right in with the rest of the other Monster Fest dolls. And even amongst like a couple of the Lagunas I have here, she stands out amongst them as well. I still love this new refreshed Laguna as well, but I don't know, this hair is so freaking good. I love the platinum blonde, I really do. And I have to say, I definitely, definitely did a 180 on this doll. I think when I was initially ranking the stock photos, 
I'm pretty sure I ranked Laguna at the bottom. I think it was this like jellyfish overskirt that I wasn't a fan of, but now that I have it, I really do like it, which I'm genuinely shocked because typically dolls that have this like a uh, iridescent crinkly fabric, I don't always love it, but it does feel effective here. Like the silhouette is so fun. You can play with this fabric really easily and fan it out and just do really fun things with it. You can dress it up, dress it down. I like how many layers these dolls have. Like that's very impressive. I feel like hopefully gone are the days where all of these pieces are stitched and connected together. It's really fun to be able to layer these dolls and you know mix and match the style with them. It definitely is a strong point for the brand and I'm glad that they're leaning into it and embracing it because at the end of the day, Monster High, they are, they are fashionistas, you know, they need to have some fashion and edge and feel a little chic. And I feel like this line is definitely pushing the bar for generation three, for the fashion, for the accessories, for the hair, it's all saran, the makeup is gorgeous, the shoes are all really good. I really have for all four of them, nothing but like positive things to say. As far as these dolls go, pretty good, pretty good Mattel. I'm, I'm very happy for the price point, for what we're getting. They definitely feel worth your money. And I hope kids like them too. I always wonder that because like I'm an adult, I have an adult perspective. I'm here, I don't know, probably making videos for other adults, I assume. And so I don't know if kids like these or not. You know, I, 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 I tend to lean on the side of like having faith in children and their intuition and their taste as well. And like respecting that and not just assuming that they're like dumb and don't know something good when they see it. I don't know if these brands feel the same way, but maybe they do because I definitely feel like if you were to line up G3 from beginning to end of like most recent release to like oldest releases, you'll definitely see an evolution. And these dolls definitely feel like honed in on what the brand wants to be and what the brand should be. So I'm very impressed and very happy. I'm thinking maybe like down the line, once I've had Laguna in my collection for a little bit and I fix up her hair, I'll probably rank them. And it's gonna be a very tough ranking because none of them are bad dolls. It's gonna be like splitting hairs, like 9.5 versus 10, like who just edges out the other ones? Like it's that close. I do think Laguna's uh, face can be a little bit strange and like take some getting used to just because of her new side glands. Like the, the glasses were kind of helping her out. No, she actually looks cute from afar. She looks cute. Like from here, when I'm looking at the, the camera, she looks good. And then the closer you get, it's a little bit more, wait, no, actually, why is she kind of serving? Why is she like, Eli, shut the hell up. I look good at every angle. Okay, Laguna, um, I take it all back because maybe the side glance is kind of eating. Like, look at her, <gasps> look at her right there. Like, you're kidding. She's front and center for a reason, okay. I was trying to, I was trying to besmirch my girl's name and uh, slander these eyes, but they're actually kind of giving. They're they look really really good. That angle no, but like that angle, oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, more side glances. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Okay, well that is all I have for you today. I may or may not fix up her hair today. It just depends on how I'm feeling. So if I add a clip after this that has her hair fixed up, cool. If I don't, I'm sorry. Oh, I did fix up Claudine's hair since the last video. Uh, I just washed it in cold water and the curl pattern kind of stayed, which like never happens with me for Saran. So I don't know what's going on with Claudine, but her curls were really nice and I still love this hair. And then you've already seen Cleo's bangs. I love the bangs. I don't know about giving this doll bangs. I kind of like the, the, the middle part she's got going on. So no bangs for you, Laguna, but we might fix up your curls later. Okay, well, that is all I have for you today. Thank you for hanging out with me while I ramble and chit chat the day away. Let me know down in the comments below if you like this Laguna doll and if you plan on picking her up, whether that's right away, whether that's when she goes on sale, uh, whenever that is, if you want her in your collection, let me know because I think she's, she's definitely worthy of it. She's definitely worthy of taking up one of those slots. I know some people are very, very particular about which dolls they add and she stands out like, Low key kind of eating up the rest of these Lagunas, no? Yeah, she is. Maybe not this one. These two, since they're the newest, they feel pretty good, but ooh, y'all better watch out for her. She looks so good. Okay, for real this time, that is all I have for you today. My name is Eli and this is my channel, Jack Elijah. Thank you for hanging out with me and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye. 
Okay, I did decide to go back and curl this doll. It's it's an okay curl job. It's not not the best. Um, I did it pretty quickly. You can see some of these tendrils are really thick still. Like I could definitely maybe fluff them out a little bit more, but they're pretty nice bouncy curls, all things considered. And there she is. I also decided to attach her handbag to her hand with elastic so she can carry it like this. I did that with Cleo and Claudine as well. Not Frankie, but you know, maybe I'll do it to Frankie too, who knows. But I like the way it looks, the way they kind of hold it with all of their accessories. It kind of helps spread out some of uh, the focus because I feel like when I have it just draped over her elbow, like her, uh, her forearm, it makes the center feel very chunky. So it kind of spreads some of that pink color throughout her design and lets the eye flow through a little bit smoother, I think. And there she is next to the other Lagunas. And then there she is next to my other Monster Fest dolls. I don't know. I really do like her. The details on her are very cool. Okay, that is my final, final farewell. I just wanted to give a quick update on the hair. I said I would give an update if I did the hair. I did end up doing the hair. So here's that update. That is all I have for you today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.